Well, I think game planning has changed so much over the years. I think with the advent of huddle, especially at the high school level, I mean, I went from 16 millimeter and doing cut-ups that way. I, I, we went from that to VHS tapes to DVDs, and now you have everything online. If you wanted film on St. X, you can get every one of my game films somehow, some way. That's just the reality. That's why I laugh when, when some coaches will talk about what do you want to exchange. Oh, let's just, uh, you can have whatever I have, because you probably have it anyway. You know, that, that's what's funny with technology. So what, what I'm more concerned with, I want my scouts to get a feel. I'm going to get the film. I'm going to see what they do. But I want to get, what's the cadence? I want them down close enough to get the cadence. Were there any significant injuries at the time? Are kids not going to be playing next? Stuff you can't see on film is what we want our scouts to worry about. You know, when you start talking about what they do, I'm not worried about what they do because we'll get that from film. I want to know what your take is on them. How physical are they? What did you see on the sideline when there was a turnover? How did kids handle themselves after that turnover? How was he acting on I want to know a little bit about the, the character of the team and the culture of the team. Normally, it's uh, with the schedule we play, with the quality of opponents, it's always, Coach, I tell you, they're, they're tough kids. They're mentally tough. They're physically tough. This happened. Hey, there was an uh, interception. It was returned. For, how'd they react? He said they didn't blink. You know, those are the things I want to know is, is how do they handle when things go wrong. And again, we talked about cadence. Did you get any audible system? What did you think? But that's from the scouting standpoint. As far as film breakdown, like I said, I'm going to assign a specific assignment to each of the position coaches. So offensively, I'm going to have a coach that's focused on red zone. And all the game films we have, I want you to clip all the red zone defenses. And you'll find out real fast what is their pattern, what's their MO. They're going to pressure you. These are their top three pressures in this situation. These are their top three coverages. But you do that across the board, so goal line. What do they run on the goal? Somebody, one coach is responsible for that. So that's his focus. He's going to study on, on that. My passing game coordinator, he's going to look at all the coverages. He's going to break it down into down and distance as well. And third and long, what are they going to run? Well, 80% of the time, they're going to be in a cover two deep look. They're only bringing four or they're bringing pressure. So th from there, you get an idea of what teams are and what they're hanging their hat on. And then it's just as simple as what's good against it. So everybody has their assignment. When we come in on Sunday mornings, that's when we're going to go round table. All right, what are their run game court? Dave, hey, these are their top, and he'll put it on a slideshow. Boom, this is their number one front. This is what they're going to do 50% of the time. All right, what do we like against it? Offensive line coaches. Yeah, I really like this. I really like that. So we're going to get a key deal together on what we're going to do in the run game and what we're going to do in the pass game. Once we get an idea of what we want to do then, we're going to look at matchups. Who do we want to run the ball at? Who do we want to throw the ball? Where can we take advantage of these matchups? I think it's as simple as that. You're not recreating the wheel. I mean, I could go into the, all the details and all the specifics, but it comes down to a few things. What is their MO? What do they hang their hat on? What's good against it? Once we have, okay, this is good against it, but They've got a six foot five, 300 pound cat over there that are we gonna run at him? No, we gotta double him. Okay, if we're gonna double him, how do we have to tweak our pass pro to make sure we're doubling that guy? And then again, it comes down to personnel issues. So power scheme may look great against a certain front. If that three technique is immovable, then well, you know, we might not wanna we might not want to run gap this week. Let's look at some other options off of it. So you get your, your basic game plan, you get your matchup issues, and then for me it's very important that, that I'm looking formationally, this is the run, what are we doing off of it? So again, you gotta start talking about play action pass, you gotta start talking about gimmicks off of it. On the perimeter, are we gonna, are we gonna crack? Are we gonna bomb? Are we, how, are we gonna stalk? Again, matchups. We want this corner to make a tackle. He's five foot seven, he weighs 148 pounds. That's the guy, we might not block him. We're gonna double to the safeties. Ben, you better make a miss. You better run over him. It's really putting yourself in the best position to take advantage of your personnel against their personnel, in my opinion. But at the same time, you've gotta start somewhere and that's with, this is what they do, this is what we have to do. The other thing I'll say is I'm a big ABC guy in everything I coach, one, two, three, maybe it's a Jesuit thing in me, but, but my focus is I want to have three answers. We're running this. 
If they do this, we're gonna to go to this. If they do this and we have to go to three, great. After three, chances are pretty good we're not going to win the football game if you get to that point. But I wanna have those answers and I think that's what good coaching is. And I learned this from year, years and years ago talking to a coach, is he said, good coaching is having the answer. Good coaching is being able to fix it. And you teach that during the week. Mom's clinics, we'll talk mom. Well, how do you, so we have our adjustments during the week. We know what our adjustments are gonna be. We might have to tweak things here or there on the fly, but for the most part, you could call our offense on a Friday night. Any one of my coaches will be able to make the calls because it's first and 10, second and medium, second and long. This is, this is what we're gonna run against it. You know, I think adjustments and all that, oh, they make great in-game adjustments. No, those adjustments should be made during the week. There's a few things you tweak in the game, but your adjustments are made during the week. So from an offensive perspective, that's what we're looking at. Defensively, I think it's the same deal. These are their core runs. This is what we have to stop. And I'm sorry, there's three core runs. That's what we're gonna stop. I don't care about the reverse. I don't care how they're tweaked. If we're gonna win, this is what we gotta stop. And this is how we're gonna stop it. These are the different ways. So let's take zone read. They're gonna run a bunch of zone read. Who's the guy we have to take out? Braxton Miller, years ago, we played in the, in the playoffs. Huber Heights, Wayne. Braxton's a great quarterback at Ohio State. We had to take away Braxton. So our game plan was focused on zone read. I have two guys assigned to Braxton Miller all the time. If the quarterback can't run and the tailback's a dude, now I'm going to have more guys assigned to that tailback. It's as simple as that. So we're going to identify the runs we have to stop and we're going to decide how we're going to stop them. That might mean we're going to have to get an extra guy in the box. Well, that's going to determine your coverage because we're going to stop the run first and we'll tweak the coverage to how we're going to stop the run. That's simple. Passing game concepts. This formation, this is the concept side. This is what they like to do. Oh, by the way, that guy over there isolated six foot five and can run a four, five, 40. We better double him. So again, now you've got all this deal going. We've got to get an extra guy in the box to defend the quarterback on his own read, but we have to double back side. What does that leave you with? Probably main coverage on the front side. So I think it's as easy as that. What do you want to take away? What do they do well? And how are you going to take that away from them? And hey, guess what? Force them to beat you with somebody else. And if they can do that, my hat's off to you. Each position coach should have a specialized scouting report for his kids. Each position coach should be going through all the clips on huddle and putting together his own play package that he's gonna send out to his kids. We're gonna hand out a scouting report total to all the kids. So they're gonna get it via technology on PowerPoint. They're gonna get a written one as well. I know what I want the kids to have. Every single offensive player is gonna get this scouting report. And these are the elements in the scouting report that we want but each position coach gets to tailor it to himself. And then it becomes a competitive deal. One coach, hey, what are you doing? And they tries to help us, and then they want to one-up one another. So you get all these bells and whistles in these PowerPoints, and let's face it, what do kids like today? They like technology. If you're just handing them a hard copy of something they have to read, you're gonna lose them. You better do it on, online, you better do it with PowerPoint. You know, whatever your system is, I think it has to be technologically driven in today's day and age. Your kids will look at you and say, what's, what's this all about? Uh, but that's what we want. You know, we could get into the merits of what do we want in a scouting report, and it's pretty simple, an overview. This offensively, this is their personnel. Names, height, weight, go-to guy. And we'll try to isolate each one and do a write-up on each player. These are his strengths, these are his weaknesses, this is the personnel. And then you get into formation. These are their top formations. These are the top plays they run out of these formations. And then it's formation recognition. So our kids better know. This is what they like to run, right? Justin, what are they going to run? Coach, they're going to run power right here, and they also like the power pass here, and they're five. These are their core plays out of this. And we want our kids to know that. We want them to call it out during the game. Watch power, watch power, watch, watch slip screen here. This is what they like. So we'll do the, the formation recognition, top plays. We'll go into specifics about the passing game. This is what they're gonna do in third and long, break down second and long, third and long. Gadget plays that they've thrown out there before, what they'll do in the red zone, what they like on the goal line. Again, you can tailor that any way you want, but it's gonna ultimately come down to top plays, 
formation recognition and top plays out of the formation recognition and ultimately who are the guys we got to take out of the system. Right now offensively in my press box we'll have my passing game coordinator and my run game coordinator. We'll also have the guy that charts for us. So I'm going to have a guy up in the box that's doing down and distance formation play and he's writing his tail off and at the end of every of every series He's going to go ahead and analyze that and let us know compared to our game plan and what we saw. Are they doing what we thought they were doing? Good. This is what we thought. This is our next adjustment. You already have that planned out. So we'll have those three in the box. Obviously, the passing game coordinators figuring out this is great. This is what they're giving us. This is what I'm seeing. This is what's going to be. We talked about this. This is what we like up great. So I say to them, hey, next second long, have a pass ready to go. So, and he'll look at our second long calls and I'll say, Steve, what do we have? And he'll, I mean, all my coaches aren't headsets. So right away, he's going to go formation with the play he's calling that we had already discussed. So everybody says, Who's, anybody can make the call because it's right there in front of you. He says, I really, I'm seeing this, I like this. So he makes the call. Then I have on the sideline, I've got a coach that's doing the wristbands with the board. So he'll either do a number and he'll hold up the board and our quarterback's looking at his wristband or it's not a wristband call. I have another coach that's signaling in. I have quarterbacks with the red hats and looking different. They're signaling dummy signals or one of the quarterbacks is hot and he's here and the coach tell him to play and he's sick. So, so we've got the, the coach that's doing the signal plays, the guy that's doing the wristband plays. I've got the coach, he's going personnel groupings. As soon as Steve up in the box says, hey, we, we need to go 12, 12 amigos, 12 amigos. He's yelling, amigos, 12 amigos. And you see the personnel going in. And then he's saying wristband number four. And so we've got our guy writing four up on the board and holding it up. And I got these goofy quarterbacks doing this stuff and nobody knows what the heck's going on. And they don't know if we're signaling or boarding it. Oh shoot, and it's craziness and we've got 25 seconds to do it. So it takes, you got to practice this and we're going to practice it during the week. And you've got your get back coaches, I got my strength coaches and they're keeping those guys back well behind the line so we're not getting penalized and those guys are running up and down the deal. It's crazy, it really is crazy. But I think it's important, it's the most important thing that, that I could send to a young aspiring head coach is everybody has to have a purpose and everybody has to feel invested in what you're doing. Whatever role you give them, it can't just be, okay, when he comes out, talk to him. This is your role, you're invested, this is how you're integral to the team. No different from what we tell players. If you're required to score touchdowns and that's your role, you better score a lot of touchdowns. If you're required to play on scout team and get those guys ready to score touch, that's your role and you better fill it and you better fill it well because it's important. And the same thing's true of the staff. You can't just have guys standing around doing nothing invest in them they got to invest in you as a coordinator it's so funny i couldn't call a game defensively on the field i needed to be in the box so i could see i needed to spread all my stuff out i needed to see the game i didn't need interruption i, I needed to be focused on what i was doing with no in interruptions there are just too many interruptions on the field now what does that mean that means i really had to trust the guys on the field that were gonna make the game adjustments, the in-game adjustments. I had to trust them, but I did. I did, and I, it just fit. Now, Tim likes being on the field. My defense coordinator likes being on the field. That's what he prefers. Does that mean he can't call a game from the field? No, absolutely. You see guys doing it differently all the time. To me, it comes down to what is the best fit for the team? Not what is the best fit for the coach, but what is the best fit for the team. And if Tim wants to be on the field, I have no problem with that. However, who's in a box? Are they going to give you what you need from the box? For me, I need my passing game coordinator in the box so he can see the coverages. He can see how it's developing because he'll be able to call the passing game better from there. I think the same is true of my run game coordinator. They need to be up in a box. So whether Dave or Steve really want to be on the field, I'm not sure. I don't think they care. I think they like being in the box so it fits. But I also know that the guys I have on the field are great at making the adjustments. I never go over and make adjustments. I have to manage the game at that point. So I have to trust all these guys to do their jobs. Start with what they, they want to do. But then analyze the rest of your staff and say, okay, if this is what you want to do, and in the off season, part of your plan and part of your goals, who do we have to hire? We have to hire somebody that's going to be good out of the box. 
So then your interview process takes a different form because you know you're looking for a guy that's going to be up in the box. You have to talk, have you been in the box? If so, what are you going to tell me about how you would call a game from the box and things you're going to look for? And that'll tell you an awful lot about the guy right away. So then I'll adapt to what he sees. And even before the week, I'm going to ask the quarter, whoever's going to be playing, Sean, what do you like? What do you like to throw? What don't you like to throw? Well, I know. What don't you like? Well, I don't like, I don't like stallion because it gets a little muddy in the middle, especially with the coverage they're playing. Fine. I'll get, ra- I'll get rid of it. I'm not going to force my quarterback to throw something he's not comfortable with. Shame on me as a coach. I want to do what he feels confident about. Now, what am I going to do the next week in practice? I'm going to focus on a little stallion concept. I'm going to try to help him see things a little more clearly. That's teaching. Player feedback is huge.